Hey everybody, this is Matt for The Foundry, and in this tutorial I'm going to be using Colorway 1.3 to take this initial Colorway project and make it look something a little bit more like this. So we're going to be using the new 1.3 functionality to create part groups and combine parts in our scene, create light groups and set up the lighting, we're going to be adding materials and swatches before finally adding some filters and creating some brand new looks. So let's get going. So after opening my initial render in Colorway 1.3, the first thing that I would want to do normally is check out my parts and ensure that everything has come across from the 3D application correctly. So I'm going to hit my uh, parts icon down here at the bottom and you can see in this left hand panel all of the parts that I have in the scene. You can see I have many, many different parts. Now this file was originally rendered from Modo, so each part here represents a material group that was tagged inside of my Modo scene. Now I could work like this, however what I'm going to do is use some of the brand new 1.2 functionality to group some parts together. And I'm actually going to collapse some parts down into a single part as well, kind of making my scene a little bit easier for us to use. The good thing about that is that it gives us the flexibility to uncollapse them at any point if we do want to work with those parts individually. So let's take a look. The first thing I want to do is go and grab my stitches, my piping and my tongue and I'm going to hit the group icon here just to group those together down here at the bottom. Now there's two views for the group. Uh, at the moment we're in the big thumbnail view and you can see I can grab my group here, I can collapse it, I can expand it, etc. Alternatively I can go to this view here where it's much more of a tree view and I'm just going to be working in here just temporarily. So I'm going to call this new group, uh, I'm going to call it upper detail, like that. Now currently this is just a group, it's not doing anything to combine our parts, so if I click them, the individual parts are still going to be selectable, and you can assign an individual material to each one of those parts in turn. However, if I click this little button here, what will happen is that that group will be collapsed, and Colorway will now treat it as a single materialable part. So this is going to really help us organize our scene and ensure that we only give control of the parts that we want to other artists down the line. So now I'm just going to go ahead and set up the other part groups in my scene. So you can see at this point that we've drastically simplified our scene. We've collapsed those three groups into three single colorway parts. The next thing I would do at this point is set up the lighting in my scene. So I'm going to click the light icon down here to bring in the lights panel. And you can see I've got four lights in this project, an environment light and three Lumigon lights. So let's group the three Lumigon lights together in a group called, surprise surprise, Lumigons. Now the cool thing with groups inside of Colorway 1.3 is the fact that not only do I get control over the intensity and colour of the individual lights in my scene, but also I can control them at the group level. So this is like a multiplier over the intensity and colours of all the individual lights inside the group. So at this point I'm going to set up the uh, initial lighting environment for my project, so I'm going to grab all the lights in my scene and just pull their intensity all the way down, which is just the way I tend to work. Now I'm going to grab my Lumi back and just pull that up a little bit and you can see that this is a very bright light uh, so we really don't need that to be pulled up too much at all. And of course this is the beauty of working in Colorway, the fact that I can change all of this in real time. So I'm just going to bring in my left and right lights at this point and we're going to pull in that environment light as well just to add a little bit of light to the bottom of the shoe and the inside and you can see we're a little blown out there so of course I'm going to make changes that were we to re-render this from 3D would take quite a long time. Now at this point I could add individual colours to the lights but in this project we want to see the colour of the shoe that is the most important thing so I'm not going to do that I'm just going to hit undo and keep all of my lights as white. Now with my light setup complete, I'm going to go over to my looks panel and I'm going to store a look in my scene so we can get back to this point and I'm going to call this light setup. And with that, all of my light setup is now done. So at this point we're ready to create some materials. So I'm going to hit the little paint can icon down here at the bottom to bring in my materials palette. And you can see straight away that all of the materials that were added to this project from 3D have been added into this original materials group. Now I'm not going to uh, actually edit those, I'm going to create some brand new materials. So I'm going to create my first one by hitting the plus button here. And I'm going to call this material white. Now you can see that the colours inside of Colorway right now are represented as 0 to 1 float values. However, a lot of people would prefer this to be 0 to 255. So to get that working, I'm going to come up here to Colorway, Preferences, and in the General tab, I'm going to turn on this very bottom checkbox, Input Display Color Values in the 0 to 255 range. And when I do that, you can see I can now input colours as 0 to 255, which for a lot of people is much easier. So I'm just going to make this, uh, this colour slightly off-white because of course we never want pure white or pure black in CG. And at this point I'm just going to go ahead and create all of the other materials in my scene. 
So at this point I've created all of the materials I need for this project, so I'm going to grab them all over here in the material panel, hit the group icon, and call this group Shoe Palette. And we're now ready to go ahead and start assigning those materials to the part groups that we've created. Now just before we do, I'm going to bring in my looks panel by hitting Command or Control 1 on my keyboard. Uh, and with that done, I'm going to bring in my light setup, just recall that from earlier so our lighting is in place. I'm also going to bring in my materials palette now, and we can start dragging and dropping materials from our shoe palette folder onto parts in our scene. So for instance, if I grab this foundry yellow material and drag it onto this uh, logo on the side of the shoe, that will instantly become yellow. Now if I was to click this logo, we get two things. First of all, we can optionally change the color of the material directly here in the UI if we wish, although of course I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit undo. And at the bottom, we can see all of the possible materials that we, the artist, have allowed to be placed upon this part. So at this point, I've got the original material from 3D, and of course the yellow that I've just dragged in. So let's complete this look. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a silver to the inside there. I'm going to add black pretty much everywhere else to the main part of the shoe, to the bottom, to the piping on the top. I'm going to make the uh, laces at the top of here white, and I'm going to make the studs on the bottom this lovely foundry yellow colour. So this is my first skew, this is my first variant for the shoes in my scene. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead to my looks panel and hit plus to create a look to store this variation. I'm going to double click it and call this uh, black, yellow, underscore, and I'm going to give it my skew value of course, 1623, for my colorway 2016 range of shoes that I am obviously manufacturing. Now at this point, because I am creating looks in a range, I'm going to group all of my looks together. So I'm going to hit the group icon and I'm going to call this colorway 2016, like so. And right now I'm going to go ahead and create all of the other looks that I want in my colorway 2016 range. All of my variants in my colorway 2016 range of shoes are now created. I hope you agree, they look awesome. Uh, and we're now going to go ahead and take a look at the filters in my scene to add in a backdrop, maybe some defocus, and also a logo in the bottom right hand corner. So I'm going to hit Command or Control 5 on my keyboard to bring in my filters panel, which you can see is currently completely blank. So we're going to add in a couple of filters by clicking this plus icon from the bottom and just choosing them from this list. Now the first one I'm going to add in is a lens filter, which will of course in real time add some chromatic aberration, perhaps some lens blur, maybe a little bit of lens distortion as well. Although in my cases I'm just going to undo back to the defaults, which I actually quite like. The next thing I want to do is add in a backdrop, and uh, the backdrop is quite cool because you can of course add a constant colour if you want here just by choosing a colour from this first colour wheel. However you can also choose a linear gradient if you want, so in my case I can use of course the on-screen controls to change the rotation and position of that gradient if I so wish. I can also choose a radial gradient now as well, which will give me a nice kind of focus on this, uh, on this product in the middle of my image. However, I'm just going to choose for now just a constant colour. I'm going to change that to a kind of slightly dark grey. So I'm going to roll up my backdrop there, and we're going to add in a vignette. So let's go and find that for the list, add that in. And you can see we've got on-screen controls for this guy as well, so I can up the radius, I can change the roundness if I want, I can change the aspect ratio, maybe the softness here as well could afford to be much, much softer in our case. In fact, I'm going to zoom out a little bit further and just make that radius a little bit bigger too. Now with that done, I'm going to add in a defocus, like so. And you can see straight away we're getting much better results in colorway 1.3 than we did in colorway 1.2. I'm just going to add in a couple of values here that I found through a little bit of experimentation because I really don't want the effect to be quite that strong. You can see it's just very subtle here on the very corners of my image when I turn that on and off. I'm just going to wrap that up, same with the vignette, same with the lens maybe focus my image as well. And finally, the last thing that I want to do here is add an image in the bottom right hand corner. So I'm going to add in a, um, an image filter. Any textures in your project will be available for you to choose in this, uh, this section at the top of the filter here. I'm just going to click that one and you can see I get my colorway image. So I'm just going to scale that down using the scale tab, like so. And I can also position that very easily now in the bottom right hand corner of my image. I'm just going to hit escape to get rid of those on-screen controls. So that is how you add filters using the new on-screen controls in Colorway 1.3. We're now at this point ready to render out our colorway range to disk. Now there are two ways to save images to disk from Colorway. If you go to the file menu, you'll see them here at the bottom. We've got render, which will render out just the current variation to disk, and batch render, which will allow you to render out multiple variations quickly in one go. 
So that's the option we want to be using. However, just before I click it, I'm going to come down to my looks panel and ensure that my colorway 2016 group is selected as those are the looks that I want to render out. So I'm going to come up to File, Batch Render, and you can see we have an option at the top here for rendering out just the current active look, the selected looks in my scene, or all looks. So in my case, I just want to render out the colorway 2016 group, so I'm going to click Selection. And after setting up my size and my format and choosing a render directory, I can hit render and save those images out to disk at full resolution much more quickly than I ever would be able to from a 3D package. So let's go over into my finder and take a look at those images and you can see that they're rendered out here. I've got four, black, yellow, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, and red and yellow. Rendered out high res extremely quickly. Now another thing we allow you to do in Colorway 1.3 is render out just the diffuse pass, just the constant colors that are being applied to your product directly inside of Colorway. And to see that, you can hover over the viewport here and hit the D key. Now in this case, when I go to any look in my scene, you are just looking at a flat color representation of that variant. And this can be really useful for things such as spec sheets. And now I want to render out just this diffuse pass for each of my looks inside the Colorway 2016 folder. So I'm going to select that folder again, come up to File, Batch Render, and I'm just going to turn on this option, Render Diffuse Output Only. I'm going to change my directory just so we uh, put those renders in a brand new folder and hit Choose. And then again, I'm going to render out and go back to my Finder. And you can see that in my Diffuse folder here, I've got all of those images rendered out, ready to be used in any spec sheets I might want to create. And that's it, we've completely set up our project at this point. Now, of course, an optional next step could be to come over here to our Looks panel, grab my Colorway 2016 groups, come up to File, export selected looks to 3D, and re-import them back into either Modo or Cinema 4D to get all of the variants that we've created here back in our 3D artist's hands. However, in my case, I'm going to call this done. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned a lot about all the brand new features of Colorway 1.3, and I can't wait to see what you come up with.